RBD Defense. Is the SU-57 a failure? This is a very controversial question. No other fifth generation fighter jet fires up debates like the SU-57. There are two sides to this debate. One side is that America started manufacturing the F-22 in 1996, 29 years ago, and since then, America has made 195 F-22s and over 1200 F-35s, which they have even exported to over 20 countries. Even China, a country that started its military aviation by manufacturing licensed copies of Russian aircraft, have made over 300 units of the J-20 and have even inducted their second fifth generation fighter jet, the J-35. Meanwhile, Russia is still sending Su-57 prototypes to air shows. Looking at things in this way makes it seem like the Su-57 has already failed. But that is one side of the debate. The other side of the debate is that the Su-57 has more powerful engines than both the F-22 and J-20, it is more agile and maneuverable, and the Su-57 has the highest internal payload capacity of all three of these fighter jets. This can be seen as the Su-57 being a more ambitious project than the F-22 and J-20. Also, the argument can be made that when America was developing the F-22 during the 1990s, the Soviet Union had just collapsed, so Russia was more focused on stabilizing its economy, which led to them having a much later start in the fifth generation race than America. These are the two arguments for and against the Su-57. But who is right and who is coping? To get the answer, I will recap the entire development history of the Su-57 from conception to present day. And at the end of the video, I will give a verdict on whether the Su-57 is too late to the fifth generation race or whether the Su-57 is the ultimate fifth generation fighter. Before we start, I made a similar video about the MiG-35 if you want to watch that. I will link it in the description and I will also put it on the cards. Now let's get started. The idea of a next generation fighter jet that would replace the MiG-29 and Su-27 began in 1979 in the Soviet Union with the I-90 program. The I-90 program collapsed with the Soviet Union but its spirit would be passed on to the Soviet Union's successor, the Russian Federation. In 1999, Russia started the PAC-FA, or better known as the I-21 program, to select Russia's fifth generation fighter jet. During 2001, both Mikoyan and Sukhoi submitted their designs, the MiG E721 and the Sukhoi T-50. The Russian Ministry of Defense chose the Sukhoi T-50 on April of 2002. The Sukhoi T-50's design was finalized and approved on December of 2004. The Russian Air Force Commander-in-Chief at the time projected that flight tests for the T-50 would begin during 2007, but the T-50 would not embark on its maiden flight until January of 2010, three years behind schedule. The T-50 prototype would then be showcased flying during the 2011 MAX airshow. By 2013, five T-50 prototypes amassed a combined 450 flights. So at this point, it seems like the Su-57 is ready to enter production. But there was a major issue. The five T-50 prototypes that had amassed the 450 flights were cracking. They were literally coming apart. The new radar absorbing material was not holding up. Sukhoi would then redesign the T-50 and make two more prototypes with the new redesign. But even these redesigned prototypes had issues and accidents during testing, which forced Sukhoi to push the production date from 2015 to 2020. Six years later, in 2019, the T-50 was officially given the name Su-57. On May 15, 2019, Russian President Vladimir Putin 
announced the purchase and delivery of 76 SU-57s by 2028. Production of the SU-57 began a few months later on July of 2019, though the first serial production SU-57 would go on to crash, so the Russian Air Force would not receive their first SU-57 until December of 2020. Russia took delivery of 16 more SU-57s by 2023, with plans to induct another 20 by the end of 2024. How many SU-57s Russia has in 2025 is unknown, but if we assume that they did take delivery of 20 units in 2024, then they would have 37 units. And if we assume that they will take delivery of another 20 units in 2025, then they will have 57 SU-57s by the end of 2025, which I think is an amazing coincidence. If we take this 20 aircraft a year number as the production output, then Russia will have reached their goal of 76 SU-57s by 2026. This leads on to the question that I asked at the beginning of the video. Is the Su-57 a failure? If we go by the needs of the Russian Air Force, then no, the Su-57 is not a failure. The Su-57 is the modern replacement to Russia's aging MiG-29 and Su-27 fleet that they can produce at a steady enough rate to fulfill their own needs. And this was the entire point of the I-21 program and even the I-90 program in the Soviet Union. So if we go by the needs of the Russian Air Force, then no, the Su-57 is not a failure. But is the Su-57 a failure by fifth generation standards? Is the Su-57 truly a fifth generation fighter jet or is it just a really fancy 4.5th generation fighter? This is such a deep topic that I could make a whole video on this alone, but I will try my best to address it here shortly. The Su-57 is no doubt a stealth aircraft. It's made with radar absorbing material, it has internal weapon bays, staples of a stealth aircraft. But the design of the Su-57 is not 100% dedicated to stealth like the F-22. Two glaring examples of this being the exposed engine nozzles and the straight intakes. These two design choices of the Su-57 increase its maneuverability and engine efficiency but they do objectively decrease stealth. So the Su-57 objectively has less stealth than a F-22 Raptor and even an F-35. But this is a complicated matter because recently we have seen some Su-57 variants where Russia is trying to cover up the exposed engine nozzles and even though the engine intakes are straight, they have put radar absorbing mesh in them. So even though its design is not 100% dedicated towards stealth like an F-22, but it's not like Sukhoi is just ignoring it in places either. The design of the Su-57 is fundamentally different than every other 4.5th generation fighter jet. Things like the internal weapons bay and the other stealth aspects that I have mentioned. So the Su-57 is not a true stealth aircraft in a way that the F-22 is, but it's definitely still a stealth aircraft. It really just comes down to your definition of what the requirements for a 5th generation fighter is. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you want to support my work, like the video and subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to 4000 subscribers. Uh, if you want to share your opinion, leave them down in the comments. And I will see you in the next video.